is down at the minute. Um, but basically, yeah, differentiation. I think it's for me, it's one of those things that I think students find really hard to get right, and I and I mean this kind of like not only in the first kind of bit of your placement, but also kind of in the latter part of your placement as well. And I think the reason why they don't maybe tend to focus much on it or don't get it right is because for me, successful differentiation kind of combines a lot of other things that you need to focus on as well. So you can't really differentiate if your assessment for learning isn't spot on. You can't really differentiate if you don't know the kids you don't know what their abilities are, what their target grades are, kind of, you know, where you want them to go within that lesson. And I think a lot of that is why students and even some teachers kind of struggle with differentiation. And I think, like I said, it, you, you have to combine all of those elements in order to differentiate successfully. I mean, in principle, differentiation is quite easy. You either make the, you know, the task harder or you make the task easier depending on how you know those people are performing. However, it's getting that challenge right that I think is the uh, the key thing and getting it right at the right time. Because if that doesn't happen, then it becomes a lot harder for all of the group or some of the group and then a lot easier for some of the group. And that's when things like you know disengagement comes in or anything like that. So um, if we really want to focus on differentiation and make it successful, I think the first thing is that assessment for learning. You have to know kind of where your pupils are at. And I think a lot of the time students kind of get this wrong a little bit. Well, not so much wrong, but there's a lot of focus on getting in there, delivering a lesson, making sure everything's going in right in the lesson. And I don't think there's a lot of focus on just take a step back. And that's um, a tell... Oh, sorry. I tell a lot of my students, you know, at some point in that lesson, you've got to take a step back and just watch the students, okay, because it's all, all, all well and good kind of giving them levels and target levels or whatever, but if you yourself don't know kind of what each individual in that group is, is good at, what they're bad at, who's your best, who's your worst, then you can't set that challenge at the right level. So by taking that step back in lessons, whether they're doing a drill, whether it's been a game, and that, then hopefully that will let you see them more in kind of a practical situation and even a theory situation so that from further lessons you can make sure that you differentiate effectively. Um, second thing is... Sorry, from, so from your own point of view, you've, um, you, you've got a class that you've not taught before. Yeah. So what would you say your, your general strategy will be yourself? The first thing I would do if I had a class that I don't teach before and I do it when I start new modules here with all my groups. Say I've got a, a year seven football group who I haven't seen before. The first thing I'll do is give them a game. I'll put them straight into some games um, and basically watch them in a game situation. So straight away, I can then maybe rank the players within that class from top to bottom. So what I want out of that lesson is, well, yes, I've got their target grades, but I want to know who's good at this, who's good at that. I want to know who you know my top 5% are, who my bottom 5% are, because in the future, they're going to be the groups that I put them in, and that you know the challenge that I set for them is going to be based around that ability, rather than just giving everybody the same kind of lesson and the same kind of challenge, but then some achieve it and some don't achieve it. In terms of your curriculum, do let's say year sevens are coming to PE, how do they come to PE and, and kind of how many groups and how do you work that? Yeah, within our school, um, if it was year seven for example, they come as kind of half year blocks. So the year is actually split into two bands and then basically they come down and the, each band is generally split into three groups. So you have three girls groups and three boys groups. What we actually do in year seven is we baseline uh, assess all of our pupils in the first five weeks. So they've literally just finished that for our year seven. So they've come in, obviously we haven't seen them before. And rather than going straight into PE lessons, what we've done is we've done kind of a multi-skills five week kind of circuit where the, each class will go around and do something in like football, then they'll go into gymnastics, then they'll go into fitness. And then from there, we kind of give them a target level and a baseline level. From there, they then set 
into three different groups, higher, middle, and lower. And then <clears> within those, each groups, they've each got their own individual target grade. And like I said, from there, so if I've got a group of high ability year sevens in my first lessons football, I've got their target grades, but I'll actually want to see what they're like at the game. So I could, it's going to affect my planning over the next you know, six, seven lessons that they'll have with me. You know, I mean, I think PE is quite unique in terms of when it comes to target grades. Obviously, we've, we're quite lucky in terms of we give them target grades based on their actual performance. Whereas, you know, other schools might give them target grades in PE based on, you know, English or maths from their key stage two uh, data, which means that if you're planning a lesson, you might have somebody who's got a massively high target grade, but isn't necessarily, you know, the best at a games activity or anything like that. They're quite academic. So obviously, you need to hit that target grade. So from there, you need to bring in different kind of challenges for that individual, not just for the group. That's going to allow them to develop, because ultimately, if what you're doing hasn't got a purpose, then you're not going to end get the end outcomes. Yeah, bro. The other thing I was going to uh, say was, um, <clears throat> mine's just gone blank temporarily. But we were we were talking before about um, students, le uh, you know, the the students' level of ability and so on. So with regard yeah. to setting, though. Yeah. What about group size? Are they all tend, tend to be similar size, or? Yeah, I mean, we're averaging around about twenty to twenty-five, kind of within you know a group. Um, and what I tend to do if I do kind of split the class, what I try to do is kind of split it in fours. So I'll have my top quarter, my middle, my middle two quarters, and then maybe the bottom quarters. And it just means that when it comes for me setting up drills or setting up kind of chat, um, different kind of areas they just kind of know which group they're in it works quite well because if you think the reason I do groups of four is because whatever kind of sport you do it'll kind of make it a good fit so for example if I'm on the tennis courts we've got four courts in our school so they know court one is for group one two three and four same for badminton if we were doing something like basketball I would split the court actually into four if we we're doing football I'd split the pitch into four and then basically they know which group they're in, they know whereabouts in that area they should be in, and then basically all I'll do is um, set the challenge, you know, on that specific court, that specific um, with that uh, specific group. Um, the key thing is also as well is to get your objectives right. Um, and obviously a lot of the time for lesson objectives, you've probably done loads and loads of lesson objectives. And for me, they're absolutely key. Because if you get that wrong, then the rest of the lesson is going to be wrong, you know. And a good way to bring differentiation within those lesson objectives is making them maybe specific to a group, or make it specific to a half group, and also always, always link your lesson objectives to the national curriculum levels. And um, one, it's going to show, allow you to show progress in the lesson, and number two, if you're saying to the kids, right, we're doing football, we're going to do short passing today. And you tell them this is a level four, you know, objective. If you do this, you've achieved the level four. Then the kids are going to know exactly where they're at, you know. And when it comes to your groups, if their target is a level four, okay, they're going to be their motivation is going to be sky high because they know that they've achieved that, and then they know they can press to go on, you know. So it's it's making sure that you have the right challenge at the right time for the right kids. And it's you know just taking that step back, looking at the kids, and say, right, can they do it? Is it easy? Right, what can I do to change it? You know, rather than just kind of going through that lesson, kind of being immersed in the lesson all of the time. Yeah, no, I think it's spot on because uh, Kate was saying this last week. You, you can get uh, as a teacher or as a student teacher, you can get bogged down with you've got a lesson, yeah. you know, detail lesson plan, right? Activity one, I must finish that. It says I've got to finish it in fifteen minutes. Activity two, right? Bounce on next. Activity three, bounce on. Activity four, bounce on, and so on. And, um, it, it is difficult for a um, someone who you know doesn't have the experience to take that step back and to see how the students are performing and to maybe adapt the lesson <clears throat> as it goes. Yeah, definitely. I mean, it's definitely something I recommend for all my students. You know, just just take that five ten minutes during lessons when the kids are doing some kind of drills. 
you know, when you know they're doing a, a game or something like that, and just have a look, right? Are they getting it? And if they're getting it, can I make it harder? And if they're not getting it, right, what can I do to make sure they do get it? You know, and ultimately, like I said, if you're kind of immersed in that lesson all of the time, you know, looking at your watch, looking at activities, setting up things, you don't get to see that, you know, and you could end up with six or seven kids who literally cannot get that drill. And, you know, nine times out of ten, and I've seen it from student teachers, what they'll start to do is get angry at those kids because they're not getting the drill. Well, it's not the kids' fault. It's because that drill was set up wrong. Okay, so you need to just take that step back, change the drill, and guarantee the kids will then probably start to get it. Any other pearls of wisdom on, for, on differentiation for student teachers? I, I think that's it. I mean, f for me, I think it's obviously it's massively important because I think, you know, every lesson now you should be looking at obviously students making progress and obviously this is what Ofsted look at and this is what, you know, when you guys get observed by your, your kind of link tutors or whatever, that's what they'll look at, you know, and if you don't get it right, then that progression is not going to be there, you know, and just don't be afraid to stand back a little bit and just watch them and let them go off the floor and then change things when needed, you know, and don't worry if it's not on your lesson plan, yeah, you, you know, a lesson plan is a fantastic resource, you know, and it's got your what you're doing in the lesson, what you plan to do in the lesson, okay, but it's a lot better to have a lot more resources kind of in your head and stored up there so that if you do need to change it, then you can do at any point to make sure that that challenge is there and that every kid is achieving, you know, and it's, it's making sure that achievement, that progress is there at all times. What about if I've got a group that's like 14 girls? Yeah. And they're quite like different in the in their abilities. So, like for instance, last week I did a drill that was seven v seven, and then and like I'd say about three quarters of them were really getting it and and doing everything that they needed to. The other quarter, say, weren't getting it at all. Yeah. But because they were in one big group like drill. Yeah. I wasn't sure what to do then, whether to just move it on to the next thing or slow it down and take the time to try and get those other girls up to where everyone else is. But yeah. so because of the whole group thing, I, I didn't know how to differentiate kind of for them. I mean, if what I would say, if, if it was me, you've got 14 there, you were saying some are getting it, some weren't. What I would do is basically get the ones who were getting it, and move them on. Get the ones who weren't getting it, split them off, and then put them in a different drill to try and you know develop that a little bit further. You know, right. so so what you've done is really you've kind of you've got them together. Some are getting it, some aren't. You've took that step back to look at that, and then now the key thing is right. What am I going to do now to make sure the ones who can't get it get it? The ones who do get it, you know, can increase it even further. You know, take that step back change what you're doing, don't be afraid to change what you're doing, okay, it's, you know, at the end of the day, it's about making sure those kids are getting progress, and, you know, if it's not in your lesson plan, so what, you know, yeah. I mean, for me personally, if a student completely changed something on their lesson plan, okay, to move the pupils on, I wouldn't mind that, because it's shown me that you're taking that step back, you're looking at what's going on, you're adapting to the pupils' needs, okay, and then make, you're making those change, changes for the better. You know, I mean, what activity was it in? It was in rounders. No, oh, rounders. Yeah. <laughs> so, so, yeah, don't be afraid, you know. So, yeah, take those, you know, those 10, whatever they were doing, take them onto a different exercise, right, I'm going to make it harder for you use 10 now, but you guys, you aren't getting it, okay. I'm going to work with you a little bit when the other 10 are away doing it. Okay, just to make it a little bit more easy for you so that we can do get it. And hopefully, ideally, what you'll then do is at the end of the lesson, bring them all back together again. Yeah. Right. And, and the ones that didn't get it will hopefully then be at the same levels that, that the one that did get it. Right. The only thing I find with that is like maybe if you've got the quarter, they're being, they often feel like they're being left behind and then they start to get really disengaged and, you know, not bother trying anymore because they know they're, you know, not to the next level. Yeah. And I don't want that, you know, so to happen either. I think it's all about making sure that you 
you've got that ch the challenges right at the right time for the right kids. Um, you know, I see a lot of lessons where I go in and they've set up this, you know, um, a challenge that they've maybe got off the internet or they've set up a drill that they've got off the internet or they've seen another teacher do and it goes horribly wrong because ultimately that drill wasn't right for that group. You know, so it's making sure that one, you know your group, you know, two, you know that what their targets are and what they need to achieve. Like I said before, knowing who your stronger ones are, knowing who your weaker ones are, and then just adapting that accordingly, you know. And if you can make sure that everybody is at some point, okay, recognizes that they've achieved something in that lesson, then their motivation is going to be sky high. You know, and it, like I said before, linking the kind of levels to your objectives. So, like, if I was doing a football lesson, and like I said, short passing, you know, I would say to the kids, right, if we can do this technique and we can achieve this task, then we're going to achieve a level four. You know, so ultimately they're already focused, well, I want to get this level, so I'm going to try and motivate myself to do it. You know, and if they do do it, fantastic, they've achieved it. Then we'll say, right, we're going to apply this in a game situation now. That's a level five. So who, do, who thinks they can get a higher level than what we've done before? You know, so by kind of differentiating that way, knowing the challenge at the right time and knowing who to challenge and when, hopefully they'll all get that sense of achievement and they'll all keep that motivation there as well. Okay. Any other questions? No, I don't think so. I, I uh, hugely appreciate you giving up some of your time to um, to speak to us, Michael. And, no problems. Uh, enjoy the rest of your day. What have you got on today? I've got oh, year 8 and year 11, so... <laughs> a bit of climbing. <laughs> okay, mate. <laughs> right. See you later, guys. Good luck. Bye.